Hi, everybody, and welcome back to ESC Extra. It's not that long, and Melody Festival is back once again, and we're kicking off some interviews. And first on the line is Tusset, who will be <laughs> participating in this year's contest with the song Voices. How are you today, Tusset? I'm great, and I'm so happy that you pronounced my, my name correctly. It's, oh, it's I was a bit nervous. I was like, I had to just basically watch a few clips to see how they pronounce it I and, <laughs> and then just practice that a hundred times <laughs> <laughs> no pressure <laughs> how are you doing today I'm, I'm doing good I'm doing great uh, it's a bit cold outside it's like 18 degrees minus so uh, I'm I'm inside today <laughs> <laughs> very very cold okay yeah. just before we start off the interview um, I just wanted to ask you can you name me one fact that every person should know about yourself? Oh, that every, person, per, uh, that every person should know. Well, my age, I'm 19 years old. And then maybe I watch a lot of the uh, TV series. So if you, uh, if you wanna discuss some series, I'm your guy. So uh, yeah. All right, then well, we'll send them your direction then on Instagram. <laughs> Okay, then uh, moving on. Let's just start from the beginning. Obviously, people know you from obviously winning Idol uh, a couple of years ago. And also just before that, you also participated in Talang, which is a Swedish version of uh, Sweet, uh, Got Talent. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you, what was your participation like in those two shows? And how do you think you've progressed from Talang to Idol? Uh, okay, so like this, when uh, I was when I was a per partic participant in uh, Talang, um, it it was not actually me that um, sent in my application. It was my mother, so I was so nervous. I was like, <laughs> "What WTF? What am I doing here?" I, I didn't have a clue. Uh, so I went in for it. I, I just sang, and I didn't ex I didn't expect. I expected nothing from the audience and the jury, but I got a standing ovation. And, and since then I've been like, okay, what now? Uh, and then I went back home and I think I became more serious about pursuing a, um, a career uh, as an artist. So I started to work on my music and uh, just my moves and you know uh, the whole uh, brand that is me. So uh, I think the difference between Talang was that an idol is like uh, before Talang I was like just a singer and before uh, idol I, I were more I was more uh, of a performer. Okay, uh, do you think participating in both Talang and Idol have helped you, you know, shape you as an artist and hopefully prepare you for your upcoming Melo journey? Of course, because it's TV. So it's like, it's a lot of people, producers and people just, uh, they are everywhere and there's one camera and you should look straight right, right into it and just sing. And it's crazy because it's scary. So uh, I think uh, it takes the edge off that I have already experienced the TV stuff. So uh, now with Mellow, uh, I just uh, need to, you know, uh, sing and dance and not focus on the TV stuff, you know. Okay, um, I mean, I've watched a lot of your performances and I'm blown away every time. Uh, I mean, people will just say this just because I'm a Eurovision fan. I really, really like your version of Rise Like a Phoenix. I <laughs> was just oof, blown away. Yeah, but that's my favorite. I mean, looking at your previous performances on either competition, do you have a favorite? I do actually, and it's uh, a lot of people uh, like uh, Rosa Phoenix, and I love it too. Uh, and I, I remember doing that song, and it was really important to me that um, it was done in the way that it was done, uh, in the correct way. And um, yeah, so I'm really thankful for that. Uh, but my actual favorite is How Will I Know by Whitney Houston. When I did that one, I was like, uh, really, I was I went out on stage and just I my only thought was have fun and I did have so much fun doing that. 
when I was watching it, I was like, he was just living his best life. Exactly. It, it, and I was like, I want to be friends with that guy. And yeah. I just want to go out dancing on the club and just like, because the whole like happy vibe that you gave off with that performance was like, if only I was in Sweden, right? But, you know, obviously you, tur- you were the winner anyways. <laughs> because <laughs> you've participated in Idol, you've obviously shown your vocal capability and that you were able to basically perform any song that's given to you and make it your own. Do you have a preference as to you prefer performing upbeat songs or downbeat songs? That's actually the greatest difficulty because I don't know. I think I love both. And the, yeah, you asked about Talang. And before Talang, I've, I had never sang, uh, before Idol, I had never sang an um, upbeat song. And then I did, I think How Will I Know was one of my first times I actually did. And I loved every minute of it. Uh, but when I do Rise Like a Phoenix and something uh, big and calm, it's another feeling. It's like, it's two different word, worlds and it's really hard. But I think I prefer, oh Jesus. <laughs> I, I prefer, I prefer uh, upbeat. It, sh- it shows off your personality quite well. So I'll say that to you. <laughs> Great. Okay, then uh, one final question in regards to that. Obviously, you've won Idol and obviously the audiences know you. Is it, a, have you had a lot of pressure? Because obviously you were just off winning Idol and now you're going to head on for another <laughs> big competition. Is there a pressure to do well on that one for you there is a lot of pressure and uh, I think some of it is for myself also uh, because I expect that and it's not uh, pressure about the results because the results are what they are it's pressure about the performance the performance and the quality so I put the pressure on myself uh, and I put the pressure on my dancers and my singers and everybody in the team, just so they know that we gonna we have to be next level because you know <laughs> obviously people are gonna expect that because uh, I've done this uh, with Idol, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of pressure and I I try not to think about it because it's very overwhelming and sometimes I get really you know just in my head and thinking too much and just. Ah, just screams. Uh, but yeah, I, I try to deal with it, but it's hard. But, you know, all of the fans are keeping their fingers crossed and everyone's got their eyes on you. So Great. very, very excited. <laughs> okay, then um, moving on, obviously yeah. you are going to be one of the participants for this year's Melody Festival. And have you, are you a fan of the Eurovision Song Contest or yeah. did you heard of it when you obviously live in Sweden? Yeah, I, I was quite late with um, watching uh, Melody for Solemn. Uh, it was 2012, my first time I watched. And I remember watching the whole show. Uh, and then there was a, there was a girl, uh, really long hair, and she went out on stage. And it was re- really mystical. I was like, what's this? Not, what's not? What this? What? what uh, I was really confused. And then she sang and I was blown away. And I was like, respect. And uh, I think that moment was the moment I, I said to myself, I'm never gonna be in that show because I mean, that's the next level of t- talent, you know? Uh, so Laureen, I'm talking about Laureen, uh, Laureen uh, with yes. the song Euphoria. She was amazing and uh, was a huge inspiration for me to just keep moving on with my, my stuff. I mean, Laureen has been like this once in a generation, like participant and yeah. obviously yeah. Euphoria as well with the entry. It's actually the reason why I became a Eurovision fan. So, it <laughs> so it's a lot of, if you, if you ask a lot of Eurovision fans, they'll say Laureen, Euphoria. Yeah. yeah. That's, the main, it, that's, the main, yeah. that's the main one. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. now that you're officially, well, part of the Mello family, how did your participation come up this year? Okay, so it was uh, I, like this. When I was in Idol in uh, 2019, uh, you know Christa Björkman? Yes. Yeah, so he was a guest jury one week 
and it was the week I did Rise Like a Phoenix. So it was really fun because he was the one that said, you're welcome to Melody Festival and whenever you want. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, of course, everybody spe speculated. Uh, everybody thought I was going to be in it and was like, um, yes, of course, he's going to say yes. But I said no uh, to him that, that day and that time. Because uh, I remember I, was, I wasn't thinking about Melody Festival at all. And then this summer, last summer, I was in Stockholm and I write uh, in the capital Sweden and I wrote a lot of songs. Um, and then I was in a session with Joy Deb, uh, who yes. has written uh, Heroes by Monsel Love, you know, You by Robin Cranbey and a lot of mm -hmm. other uh, Eurovision songs. Uh, and I was in a session with him and he was dying to write a song for me to Melo. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not doing Melo next year, you know? Uh, I got my own stuff, my own music. Uh, and yeah, so I went home and I, I didn't think about the session anymore because we, have, uh, we wrote a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. So um, another writer in that session uh, called me. She was like, you gotta come down now and, and sing this song without thinking it was going to mellow or not. So I was like, okay, I'll come down. And then I heard the song and I was like, respect. I was like, this song is wow. Uh, so I sang it, of course. And uh, I didn't think about it no more. I went back home. And then like two weeks after I got the call, you're one of the participants to Melody Festival. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's because of the song I'm, I'm here. So mm -hmm. that song made the decision for me. I mean, obviously, we're still far ahead till the third semifinal. Is there anything you can tell us about the song? Ooh, okay. Uh, I love the song because it's ha it had a, it has a clear message, uh, and the message is um, unity, uh, and it's about freedom and hope, uh, and it's I, I like it because it's it's what we need right now in the world in Sweden. Uh, you know, everybody feels alone now in Corona. There's a lot of people living alone, uh, not meeting anybody. And I think we need unity more than ever uh, and, and come together, uh, obviously not physically because it's, it, there's a pandemic, but uh, you know, mentally. And to remember that there's more, we have more in common than what separates us. And that's uh, what the song is all about, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay then, now looking at the song itself and obviously you've released a few singles after Idol. Yeah. Um, how do they compare to this? Oh, this one is, a, is another level, you know. Uh, the singles I released after Idol was, you know, um, I think, because there's such a rush after winning Idol. So it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of, uh, should we release this song or this song or this song? Uh, and we have two weeks to prepare. And it was so much stress, you know. Um, so I think this song, is another type of song because it's thought through and it's it's not hurried in any sort uh, and it's much bigger you know uh, so okay. yeah well we can't wait to hear it um also in your uh, participation in mellow we also found out you're closing a show your, the show. Yeah. yeah you're closing one of the shows yeah. what was your yeah. what was your reaction when you found out Oh, you know, I did. I didn't. I just looked uh, really quickly at the list. I didn't. I was like, "Oh, it's a great." I, I love the, that it's the third show, and I, I didn't think about it no more. So I just uh, went back uh, to what I was doing, and then I, I have uh, my friend called me up. She was like, "Oh my god!" Oh, like what? Because I didn't know it was a big deal, you know, closing the show. I was. I just thought it was like, well, it's just the number. And then she was like, yeah, you, Eric Sade, Dotter, and a bunch of others, you're closing the shows. And I was like, what, is that a big deal? She was like, yeah, it is. And I was like, oh, so that add, added to the pressure. <laughs> so, cause usually if you're closing a show, yeah. the producers have a lot of faith on your oh, song. Geez. So everyone is like, oh, he's closing a show. He's closing a show and he's and he's got these veteran songwriters on his song. So 
a lot of people have got their eyes on you. <laughs> This doesn't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good thing because it means that, I mean, for you to have that as a newcomer, not yeah. a lot of people get that treatment. So I'm, I'm really blessed and I'm really thankful that to, to be here and to do this. And, and obviously we can't wait to see it. But obviously we, Melo's going to be different this year due yeah. to COVID. And I mean, the shows will be taking place in the same place where Idol Estate does their live shows, but without yeah. an audience. Yes. How did that feel when you found out that obviously if you're going to perform your song, there's no audience. How did mm. you feel when you found that out? It was a little bit disappointing, of course, uh, and I was because I was uh, I, my, I, I myself have sit uh, sitting in the mellow audience, and it's always a lot of people, a lot of balloons, and uh, a great just ha people having a great time. But um, yeah, when they said that they they weren't gonna have an audience uh, an audience at all, I was a little bit disapp disappointed. But then thinking of why uh, they don't have an audience uh, because of the restrictions and because people uh, just uh, could, could get sick, you know, and uh, to end the pandemic, uh, that makes me hopeful and um, really happy. So uh, I'm glad that they don't have an audience, of course, because it's, uh, it's Corona, but a little bit, you know, you don't have the extra uh, spark in the performance without an audience, you know, an applause. Okay, if we were in a scenario where we were able to have an audience, yeah. do you think it would make you more nervous or do you think not having the audience there would, is mm. helping you in a way to perform it? That's, uh, no, I think that the, the um, audience are quite helpful because, you know, you, you don't just see a whole lot of people, you see every single one of them. I mean, I, I remember uh, with Idol, I always looked at every single one of them, you know, indiv indiv individually, you know, and just took in and appreciated every single one of them. Uh, and it's just a feeling to add to the performance that you just can't get anywhere else. So it's a little bit uh, missing, something is missing. Uh, so yeah, uh, it would take off a little of the pressure if there was an audience. <laughs> good, good. Well, I mean, I mean, I, w I was got it. I can't be there, obviously, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, hopefully we'll see you soon in person. Yeah. <laughs> but final thing I wanted to ask you, I, I know you can't say much about this, but have you thought how, do you know how the song is going to be staged for next month? Okay. That was actually a really fun, um, fun thing to do. Uh, the, the planning of it, uh, all the meetings about it, And then the actual, uh, you know, build up of the stage and the everything that's gonna happen. It, it has been a really uh, fun work with uh, SVT, uh, the the TV production, uh, the production company that does everything. Uh, they're they're really good. SVT is really good. Uh, so it, it's it's been really fun. I can't say a lot, but I, I think I can say that. It's gonna be, oh my God, what can I say? Ah! <laughs> can I give something away? I can give something away. I can give away that there's gonna be rain. <laughs> I can't say more than that. <laughs> well, I mean, we've had rain before, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna be fun. Okay, all right then, well. I just wanted to say thank you very much to Sif for taking the time to interview with us. Is there anything you sure. wanted to say to all of the people watching us over at ESC Extra? I'm really thankful for all your comments and all your anticipation, anticipation in this uh, whole thing. It's crazy. You're very special to me and you're, uh, you're amazing. Just keep it up and uh, we'll... Uh, We'll try. We'll do our best in the, in Melodi Festival, and I hope to see every each one, each and every one of you uh, at some place in the future. Have a great time. 
Okay, then. Uh, before that, uh, is do you want to invite people to watch you or even follow you in social media? Yeah, of course. You should you should follow me on social media, and you should watch every single one of my performances on YouTube and listen to my uh, newest single and every every song on Spotify. Uh, I'm really proud of the the latest one. So yeah, check it out. Okay, then. Well. I mean, forgive me if I'm going to butcher this. To say, Taksamika Uklikatil in Melody Festival. Yes, you did good. Taksi Have a good time. But, anyways, thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you like what you saw, then please press the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to push the notification bell to find out when we got a new video. Also, follow us at EAC Extra on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But for now, Taksamika. Oh, 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 oh,